Good evening. Welcome to Dispatch, the weekly show designed to keep you on track as you build and operate your layout. I'm Roy Smith, your dispatcher. I want to welcome those of you who are here in the studio audience tonight. It's amazing how many of you can squeeze into this train room. I also want to welcome all of you out there somewhere on YouTube. I'm delighted to see so many of you tuning in for the show. Thank you for letting me share the hobby of model railroading with you. Well, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight, so don't go away. We'll be right back. On this channel, we share the world's greatest hobby with you in dispatch every Tuesday night and layout updates every Saturday morning right here. Don't miss out. Be sure to subscribe. Okay, coming up on tonight's show, your layout photos, the question of the week, your comments, and a big shout out. Before doing that, though, I have two important announcements. First, I'm about to leave on a trip that will take me to Florida for a couple of weeks. That means that tonight's episode will be my last one until I come back. But I will be back before you've even noticed that I left. And dispatch on Tuesday nights and layout updates on Saturday mornings will then resume by the first week in December. The second announcement is this. Tonight's episode is the 200th video that I've uploaded to this channel. So while I'm gone, you can go over to my videos page to browse around and watch any of the 200 videos there. I will put a link to my videos page down below where it says show more. Now, first up on tonight's show, your layout photos. Once again, many of you have posted photos of your layouts in a Facebook group called the N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Group this week. As always, I've brought your photos over here to Dispatch to share with everyone during the show. And here they are. Okay, when Dispatch ends tonight, be sure to go over to the Facebook group, join the group, and post a photo of your layout there. Why would you want to do that? 
because we model railroaders love to share the hobby. That's why it doesn't matter what scale you model in, and you can even post photos of your club's layout. I will put a link down below in the description to this video that will take you to the Facebook group where you can post your photos. When you see this photo of Echo Canyon on my layout, you will know you're at the right place. Now, next up on tonight's show, the question of the week. Our question for this week is, what kind of subroad bed do you use on your layout? Remember, we're talking about subroad bed, not road bed here. Road bed, most commonly made of cork, goes directly under the track, while subroad bed is basically the top of your bench work on which you lay your road bed and track. Well, let me just say a couple of things about some of the materials you mentioned in your responses to this question. Plywood continues to be the most popular form of subroad bed, and this survey seems to confirm that. Plywood comes in various thicknesses and is readily available. It's easy to cut with a jigsaw. It offers the advantages of strength and availability, but is heavy. Extruded foam is stiff and comes in various thicknesses. It can be colored pink, blue, or yellow. Two-inch thick foam is plenty strong enough to use as some roadbed on your benchwork. It is easily cut or shaped with a hot wire cutter that melts through the foam but it can be more expensive than other sub-road bed materials. Homosote is made from recycled paper that is compressed under high temperature and pressure and held together with adhesive. It is easy to cut, but produces quite a bit of dust when cutting. Trains run more quietly on it, but it can also warp or sag, especially if it gets wet. And spline, spline refers to cutting narrow strips of material uh, that is easy to bend, such as masonite, then laminating the strips together on end. It works especially well for bending into curves. Many of you noted that you like to laminate materials such as foam or homosote together with plywood, thus combining the advantages of each material. So, which material should you use? Well, I think you need to consider the advantages of each material before deciding and check on the availability of each material in your area. I use one half inch thick plywood for my sub road bed because unlike foam or homosote, plywood is available here in Panama where I live. But plywood does have one big disadvantage here in this tropical climate. The termites love it. Well, I'd like to thank all of you for your responses to this week's question. As always, I hope the question has given you something to think about, and I hope your responses will help newcomers to the hobby in choosing which material to use for sub-roadbed on their layouts. Now, since I will be traveling and not uploading dispatch for a few weeks, I won't propose a question for the coming week. However, I do invite you to post any comments you may have down below. Posting your comments is a great way to share the hobby. I always read them, and I always appreciate them, even if I don't get around to responding to all of them. And as always, you can propose questions for the upcoming weeks down below. Remember, the best questions are those which are simple, multiple-choice type questions, rather than complex questions that require a lot of thought and which can lead to an infinite number of possible answers. And now it's time for your comments. This past Saturday, I uploaded a video called Evanston Renovation 3, How to Hide Backdrop Holes. As I noted in this video, we model railroaders sometimes cut holes in our layout backdrops in order to run tracks through our backdrops. For example, I wanted to add the junction of the Pocatello subdivision and the Evanston subdivision on my layout so that I could increase the flow of eastbound and westbound traffic on my layout. To do this, I had to cut a hole through the backdrop. I cut that hole a long time ago, 
And as I will show you in this video, I'm finally getting around to hiding it as part of the renovation of the Evanston area of my layout. Let's take a look at a clip from the video. This is what the hole through the backdrop has looked like for a long time. The two tracks passing through the hole are the beginning of the Pocatello subdivision, and the two parallel tracks in the foreground are the Evanston subdivision mainline tracks. I was able to partially hide the hole with a highway overpass after cutting the hole through the masonite. I will be using white styrofoam as a scenery base for the entire project. It may be messy, but it's cheap, readily available, and easy to work with. Now I'm going to try to do something really unorthodox to hide the hole. I'm placing a layer of styrofoam across the top of it. I will be planting trees and other vegetation on this piece of styrofoam to make it look like a part of the scenery beyond the overpass. I've finished gluing on the rest of the layers of styrofoam. Now I'm applying sculpt mold on top of the styrofoam. The sculpt mold will seal the styrofoam and will provide a base for the application of subsequent scenery materials. There, I finished applying the sculpt mold and it's drying. Like the rest of the Evanston area of my layout, the scene at the highway overpass is far from finished. A whole bunch of you posted comments in response to the video. Here's what a few of you had to say. Arnold894 wrote, Hi Roy, that looks much better than I thought it would. I really like it. I can tell you really thought it through. It pays to think about it for a while rather than just jumping in and having to do having to redo it later. You are so right, Arnold. Sometimes we have to think about what to do and how to do it when undertaking a project on our layouts. But I have a tendency to procrastinate when I don't know what to do or how to go about doing a particular task. This time, I just decided to go ahead and do it. Since I am using cheap white styrofoam as a scenery base for this project, I knew I could just throw it out if I didn't like the results and start over using a different technique. The project isn't finished, but so far I'm satisfied with the results. Tom Billing of ATSF Ventus Spur and Scaler wrote, Great illusion, Roy. You're a veritable model railroading magician. You know just how to make the hole in the backdrop disappear in a vanishing act. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You're very kind. Well, that's what we normally do in model railroading, don't we? We are trying to create a convincing illusion of reality on our layouts. Sometimes we succeed and sometimes we don't. But what matters most is that we, we have fun in the process. And nothing is more satisfying than hearing a friend say, wow, it looks real. And Troy Bostic wrote, This is probably the most unique method of hiding a hole I've ever seen. You should be writing an article for Model Railroader. You are too kind, Troy. Thanks so much. Sometimes we just have to let our imaginations run wild to see what happens on our layouts. You never know what you might come up with, and who knows, maybe even Model Railroader Magazine would like it as you suggest. I want to thank all of you who commented on the video. Again, I read all of your comments and I really appreciate them. Even if I don't always get around to responding to all of them, I can't begin to tell you how much I've learned just by reading your comments. Now, if you still haven't seen Evanston Renovation 3, How to Hide Backdrop Holes, I will put a link to it down below that will take you directly to it. Go ahead and watch it after Dispatch ends tonight. And remember, the series about renovating the Evanston area of my layout will continue when I return from my trip. And now it's time for tonight's big shout-out. And tonight's big shout-out goes to... Andy Henley and his N-Scale Montrose and Highland Railroad. I contacted Andy and here's what he told me. Andy told me that he lives in England but is modeling an American railroad. His layout replicates the area along the Ohio-Indiana border from the 1990s up to the present day. 
The Montrose and Highland Railroad is a Class II road that has its own locomotives. Andy built his U-shaped layout in a shed. The layout itself measures just 9 feet by 7 feet. He uses an NCE power cab to control his layout. He has just started to renovate the scenery on his layout using what he calls more modern techniques. I like what Andy is doing, and I think you will too. So let's go over and take a look at it right now. Hello guys, and welcome to episode number 48 of the Montrose and Highland Railroad. So coming up today, I'm having a special day. Uh, my friend Lackey is coming up from the south of England to help me with an ops session. Okay guys, so here we are down at the shed. Um, I've cleaned all the track ready for my ops session with Lackey. I think I mentioned last time that I am doing uh, an upgrade on all my scenery on the layout and I'm starting in Blue Haven. Not quite sure how it's going to go yet, but I'm hoping that it will look a lot better when it's done. This is one of Lackey's locos, Union Pacific number 1943. This is its first run out, having been converted to DCC. Okay, you've had a chance to see a bit of Andy's layout right here on Dispatch. Now be sure to go over to his channel to see the rest of it. Also be sure to subscribe to Andy's channel while you're over there if you haven't done it yet and tell him that Roy Smith sent you. I will put a link down below that will take you to his channel. And Andy, if you're out there somewhere watching this, I just want to say that I really like your layout. Thank you for letting me share it with everyone here on Dispatch tonight. I'm going to be watching your continued progress and I hope everyone else comes along too. Well, that just about concludes tonight's show, but before you go, I want to remind you that I am about to leave on a trip for Florida. While I'm gone, I hope you will go over to my videos page to browse around. There are 200 videos there for you to choose from, and hopefully I will come back from Florida with footage of model railroad clubs there to share with you. As always, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any future episodes. All right, a great big thanks to all of you here in the studio audience who joined me tonight. Remember, there will be coffee and donuts in the social area downstairs after the show. And a great big thank you to all of you out there watching on YouTube. Sharing the hobby with you really is the best part of model railroading. Until next time then, happy railroading. I'm Roy Smith and I will see you again very soon.